Out of nowhere, December the 2nd, Euros have released the group stage. We know who England are going to play, and this is our pretty much live reaction, isn't it, Dan? It is, Theo. I can't wait to see the likes of Erling Haaland and Erdegaard playing uh, whoa, on whoa, one of whoa, the whoa, biggest that, stages. No, no, no. That both Sweden and Norway didn't qualify and uh, they're not even in the playoffs so we won't right. see either of those players but don't still even... it's going to be a cracker isn't it Theo let's get, let's into, get this, into it Theo group With A group A Theo there's six groups and group A is Germany Scotland Hungary and Switzerland and I'll tell you what that is a very no, tricky no, group I'm, I'm for not that, I'll, Scotland I'll wait for dinner you mentioned I'm hungry. I'm oh, hungry. right. Yeah, Theo. I think you've done that joke dinner, like a yeah. hundred times before. But Theo, this is a <laughs> difficult group for Scotland, isn't it? Now let's talk about Germany. Yes. Because they are the host. This is the, the host. first time the Euro's been played in a reunified Germany, isn't it? That does surprise me as well because their stadiums are amazing. Yes. And it's not just the main ones like Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund. I've been to Schalke. Yeah. I've been to Mönchengladbach with you. Yes. Even the Christmas markets around that was brilliant. I've been to FC Cologne with Thog Dad. Yes. We've been to so many grounds where, and they're going to be using a lot of these stadiums, and it's just going to be a great tournament. Even the autobahn you can get from A to B really quickly. The trains are all free for football fans, and I hope they keep them that way for the Euros tournament. It's going to be very accessible for the fans, which is very different to what we saw in Qatar and other tournaments recently that's been held for national teams. It kicks off on June the 14th with Scotland against Germany. Now Germany, Theo. <laughs> Seven to one to win this. They are the third favourites. Does that surprise you? Has it not been great recently? They're the third favourites? Yes. I think Scotland have more of a chance of winning the Euros. You mug! Dad, they won two of their last eight. They've recently changed over to Nagelsmann and performances have been rubbish. Lost to Austria, lost to Turkey. They're being a disgrace. I mean, their best player, they're going to have to rely on Kai Havertz. Not for me. Serge Nabry, meh. Dad, Fulkrug is your striker. You might as well get Kevin Davis. He's just a Kevin Davis regen, you mug. Nobody in this Germany team, apart from Musiala, excites me. I disagree, Theo. They've got half the Bayern Munich team. You look at the likes of Muller, Gnabry, Sané, Goretzka, Kimmich. Do not write those players off. But it's been a terrible run-in. You can't ignore form. And I know it's in their own stadium. But they still lost to Turkey in their own ground. It's not good enough, Dad. Nagelsmann has a real job to do here. Yes. A job that nobody else could do. Flick couldn't find a way of figuring it out. He's a young manager, exciting. But you look at Hungary, they did not lose a game no. in qualifying. You look at Scotland, Theo, they only lost one game in qualifying. And Switzerland are always hard to beat. I think this is a very unpredictable group. There's going to be twists and turns yeah. here. Yeah, and, and let's talk about Hungary though, Dad. You mentioned not lost in 12 under Marco Rossi. Great manager, Dominic Soboslai, very young captain, but he deserves it. By far the best player. We could see something, maybe a cheeky second place for Hungary here. Maybe Theo. And finally, Dad, Switzerland. Murat Yakin as their manager. We know that historically they are an older team, but the players that stand out for me, Noah Okafor, yeah. in the summer went for a lot of money, and Dan and Doy. Watch out for these guys. This group could have twists and turns, and when we get around to our predictions, we're going to have to decide it, right, Dad? Switzerland, Theo, are a very well-drilled team, Theo, yeah. and they've also got stars in the likes of Akanji and Shah, who, by the way, is a very good centre-back. But just right now, I'm thinking Germany and second place Hungary. I'll be real. That's, that's what I'm feeling, but we'll get to our predictions soon. What, what's your, who's your underdog for this group? The underdog is Scotland, Theo. Wow. Group B, Theo, and I reckon this is the group of death. Oh. You've got Spain, you've got Croatia, you've got Italy, and Albania Not are easy. the minnows. Now, three of those teams, Theo, are ranked 8, 9, and 10 in the FIFA rankings. No, it's not going to be easy. I I'm so excited about this Spain team. Let's start off with them. Under De La Fuente, you've got new players like Nico Williams and Lamin Yamal breaking through. They've won eight in a row now, Dad. Yeah. And it doesn't surprise me. If you've got a midfield when we get round to the Euros of Pedri, Gavi, who's currently injured, hopefully he'll be back for it, and Rodri, yeah. I can't see anybody beating them. They are my favourites for the tournament. Do you know, Theo, with Spain and Italy, it's not the best Spain and Italy teams of all time, but you're right, there is a bit of solidity there, and they're getting better, and Rodri, one of my favourite players there. Oh, he's, he's just so good, I've already mentioned him. I think with that midfield, they can't be stopped, but the last Spanish matches I've watched, Dani Olmo has been the real yeah. deadly threat. Ferran Torres has been very clinical for Barcelona and country recently. Let's talk about Croatia, Dad. <sighs> yeah. Zlatko, Dalic, they've got an ageing team, but a few more lads are breaking through. Budimir is one of La Liga's top scorers. Ivan Osec at Feyenoord, he's looking very good. Lovro Meyer at Wolfsburg still, but constantly got big clubs asking for him. 
Could this be Modric's last big competition for country? Well, Theo, of course, Gvardiol is about a quarter of the value of the whole squad these days. And I think this tournament for yeah. Croatia will be all about the new generation. Now, they've punched above their weight in Europe, in the world, over so? the last few years. Absolutely punched above their weight. This is a country of four or five million people. What is the next generation of players like? We're going to find out. Yeah. I think a betting man would probably put them third in this group. Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest. I can't see them ending above Italy. But if Italy do their usual madness and just go on a mad run, it's either they win the whole damn thing or they go out in fourth place. They'll, they'll finish under Albania. <laughs> I can't call them. But under Luciano Spalletti, you've got a manager that won Napoli the Serie A. They did the unthinkable. They got that club, finally, the trophy they've been begging for for so long. We can't forget... Italy had to qualify on their final match day. That's amazing, Theo. Let's be honest, they shouldn't have won it against England two and a half years ago, should they? But they, but did. they did. So massive respect. And, and I, I kind actually of agree with you, Theo. It gives England a fire in their belly. It gives us a fire in our yes. belly going to Germany, thinking we can do it there. Yes. We need to do something. The World Cup, the Euros, we've had too many sad stories now. We've got a great squad. Golden generation, a lot of people would argue, but we will speak more about England then. Albania, they've been on a great run. We can't ignore them, Dad. Could they be a dark horse in this group? No. I think no. they could. I think the team that is least happy with this draw in the whole of Europe is Albania. I think they might get one point from no, somewhere. No, I disagree. I disagree. Italy, I think... Theo. I, I Italy don't might think... go in self-destruct mode. Croatia, I'm not sure they have much about them anymore. And Spain, I think they will top this group no matter what. Group C. Dad, Slovenia. Denmark. Serbia. And England. <laughs> oh my Here we goodness. are. Talking about our own nation. Are you thinking that we're going to run riot? Do you know what, Theo? Gareth Southgate should have a massive smile on his boat race right now, Theo, because this is a brilliant draw for us. And you know what? If we win this group, Theo, yeah. we play a third-place team from Group D, E or F, which could be Wales. If we come second in this group, could also be we Poland. could be playing against Germany. And that's Ooh. why we've got to go out and win two or three Hold of on. these games. Who said Germany were going to get through that group? Have you seen their that's recent a good form? point. I but, don't know. It's all up for grabs, but Dad. theoretically, we have to win this group. We've we got to go out and, and either get seven or nine points. I'll be real, Dad. During the, uh, the Euros, where a lot of the matches were played at Wembley, we had a weaker squad than what we do now. We've seen Bellingham thrive at Real Madrid, Harry Kane at Bayern Munich are big boys going abroad and really establishing themselves as a brand. Yeah. But a bit like David Beckham going Madrid back in the day. We've got several of them now. And these guys will be thinking, putting their mind on England when their club football is finished. Let's go down to basics. We've got the best team out of any Euros country. I'll be honest. Yeah. I think we do. The most expensive. And if we get our tactics somewhat correct, we'll go through this group first place Guaranteed. Well, Theo, we are the joint favourites to win the whole tournament yep. with France. We were unbeaten in qualifying. Yes, Theo, we have a superb squad. But you know what? I've been alive since 1968. And every two years, we talk about the Euros and the World Cup. And we get all happy, don't we? We say, this year, it's going to be us. And every single time, we get disappointed. Imagine game week one. You get a nil-nil against Slovenia. Very solid defence. Matthias Kak is their manager. By the way, Benjamin Sesko scoring all the goals. All black between the sticks. So you've got a poacher of a striker. And you've got a goalie who's one of the best in the world. They've got five wins in the last six matches. And didn't qualify for the last Euro. So Slovenia will be fired up. Absolutely, Theo. Now, Denmark are the team that really should get the runners-up spot. On their day, they can yeah. get a draw against England. We've been better than them in recent occasions, though. And under Kasper Hoylmund, we, we saw how good they were in the last Euros. Mailer, a, a very tragic incident with Ericsson. But the togetherness, I felt, in that squad was just ridiculous. And I tell you, one very interesting tie, Theo, is Serbia against Slovenia. That used to be Ooh. part of the former Yugoslavia. Okay. That's going to get a bit tasty. Mm. And Stojkovic has a very hot and cold team. Let's be honest, Dad. The World Cup was a shambles. Yeah. We saw Milinkovic, Savic and Mitrovic fail to make it through their group when they really should have. Mm. But Serbia need to figure out how they're going to make it work. With the Al Halal boys, Mitrovic and Milinkovic, Savic and then the rest of the squad. They're all on big money. They've all got big egos. But when it's country, they have to play together. And we never see that with Serbia. So right now, I'm favouring Denmark and England. Group D, Theo. And this is a really interesting one because it it's the Netherlands, ranked eight in the world. Austria, who we know are very good. France, ranked two in the world. And one of Poland, Wales, Finland and Estonia. Ooh. Now, Wales are probably the favourites to get through that, Theo. Mm. But they wouldn't want to face Netherlands and France. Yeah, it's not an easy group because we know about France and Netherlands. We know the quality. They both top their Euro qualifier groups, no doubt. But Austria, they just beat Germany 2-0. One point off Belgium in their overall qualifiers table, so they constantly picked up points. It wasn't just a one-off. 
And they got direct qualifications in the last Euros finishing second, but they are in a harder group. That's right, Phil. They've got the likes of Sabitzer and Arnautovic, aged yep. 35. Hopefully we'll see, see him again. But once again, a bit like Switzerland, these are a very well-organised team, they Theo. They can really make it hard. But Netherlands, Dad, they've changed since the World Cup with Van Gaal. They played quite Brexit football, lumping it up. <laughs> now they've got Ronald Koeman, and we know the style of fashion and football that he loves, and it's what the Dutch fans have wanted again. They've got their club back, their nation, Dad. Gakpo, Xavi Simons, Coop Miners. These lads are going to get more involved, aren't they? Mm. They've got some very good up-and-coming talents as well for the Feyenoord new squad. PSV doing well in the league. So I don't know which new talents he's going to play, but this new generation is really interesting. The Netherlands are ranked six in the world, and at the back you've got the wonderful Virgil van Dijk. He is evergreen, isn't he? But Theo, let's talk about France, because they are the joint favourites to win the whole tournament, as we said. The Mbappe effect nearly won them the World Cup, Theo. Yeah. You've got Theo Hernandez, Lucas Hernandez, Pavard at the back. Then going forward, you've got Colo Mwani now. Yes. Mbappe, Griezmann, Giroud still knocking about. You've got Kamavinga playing fullback. You've got Yusuf Afana from Monaco. It's a stacked squad. They beat us last time in the World Cup. They're mugs! Don't remind me of that game ever again. And I tell you what, if Chow Many lines up another shot, I'm just going to run on the pitch and stop him. Yeah. I'm bloody scared. They bottle it less than us. Maybe we have a better team on paper, but they have slightly more squad depth and they don't bottle. If England play France at some point, you toss a coin, don't you? I think it's revenge time, Dad. I yeah. think we shut Kylian Mbappe up like Kieran Trippier did in the Newcastle PSG game I was at. You mugs, that was Newcastle 1-0. I'm confident for the Euros, Dad. I don't think the French have it this time. Their stories are up. Give it to us now, you mugs. Group E now, this is an interesting oh, yeah. one there with Belgium, Slovakia, Romania, and there's a playoff between Israel, Bosnia, Ukraine, and Iceland. Now, no, Ukraine, Theo, Ukraine are probably the favourites to get through that. I'm panicking. This is a crazy group. D Romania, you, you're very big underdogs. Last time they qualified was 2016. Yeah. They have a fire in their belly to show everybody what they can do. Incredible that they finished above Switzerland and Israel in the qualifiers. Do you know what? In the qualifiers, they didn't lose a single game. Mad. We cannot write them off. They could sneak a second place. You've got Slovakia, who... Uh, they beat everybody but Portugal, didn't they, at their qualifiers, Dad? Lost yeah. Euros in a difficult group, but they've got a much better chance this time. And let's not forget, Lobotka, behind me, signed shirt. Look at that bad boy. Do you see that bad boy over there? That is Whoa. a lovely shirt. The table's, and the table's going up. The table's going up. It's getting excited. The table is uh, automatic, and it was getting excited itself. But you know what I'm saying, Dad? Lobotka can hold down the team. Yeah. That brings some extra solidity. You've got high quality all over this group, but Belgium. Tedesco is manager. How are you feeling that's going to go? Well, I've got a feeling that Romelu Lukaku, who's much maligned occasionally, but he scored 14 goals in qualifying. That's more than anybody else. Yeah. And you've got the likes, obviously, of Trossard, Doku, Tielemon. Some of the names that we recognise from the Premier League. I, honestly, Dad, this Belgium team, yeah. it depends what Tedesco wants to do with it, but there is so much depth. The only worry is they've got much less at the defence. The yeah. fullbacks, the centre-backs. They're going to have to rely on a fair few, and will they make mistakes? They could do. Playoff winner B, as you mentioned, Dad, this could be up for grabs. It could be Israel, Ukraine, Bosnia, it could be anybody. It could be anyone, Theo, you're right, but I fancy Ukraine to do it. They are ranked 22 in the world, and ironically, if they come through the playoffs, they might be the runners-up in this group. Yes, but don't write off Bosnia. They are a hardcore team. They are hard-working, and they've got good talent in there. And I think on the day, 90 minutes against Ukraine, they could just out-strengthen them. And last but not least, it's Group F, Theo. And Boom. we've got Turkey, Portugal, the Czech Republic, and one of these four, Georgia, Ooh. Greece, Kazakhstan, and Luxembourg. And the first thing I saw, Theo, potentially, Turkey versus Greece. That is a story. That Imagine is tasty, that honestly. Group F would be a F for fiery, shall we say. Because Turkey, first of all, I've just got back from there. Their fans are incredible. Yeah. And Vincenzo Montella, the Italian gaffer, has a lot of a job. He does not want another Euros like last time. Everybody yeah. called them the dark horse, Tom Garrett, on TikTok. Just say, <laughs> now they need to find a way. Okay, They topped the group in the qualifiers over Croatia and Wales. And actually, a lot of that job was to Yildiz, mm. the winger, 18 years old from Juventus. Wow. Playing for country already and shining. In big moments, they've just beaten Germany in their own stadium 3-2. Never write them off. And I tell you what, there's a lot of Turkish people who live in Germany. Yes. A lot of German Turks, and they will be in the grounds and in their numbers. And a lot numbers. of the Turks who play in the Bundesliga and Bundesliga 2. They will have great fans there, lots of depth. They'll feel fresh and ready to go. This could be their best ever opportunity. 
But we got to look at Czech Republic as well, Dad. They've got Stil yeah. Havi as manager. Yeah. Holoszek at Leverkusen doesn't have to go far because it's staying in Germany and they're using their ground. You've got Corey up top who scores the goals. And then Portugal. Roberto Martinez as manager. <laughs> From Belgium national team to Portugal national team. Have you ever seen that, Dad, where he's gone to change nationality as a gaffer? That is incredible. Now, look at Portugal in the qualifying stages. 10 games, 1-10, scored 36 and conceded just two goals. That's amazing. The only nation to do that out of everybody in the Euro qualifiers. Perfect form. But, Dad... I just think it's a waste of time that they continuously play Cristiano Ronaldo. Hey, excuse me, that's my no, goat there. I, I guess he's your goat, but his era is over. Focus on the new boys. You've got Ramos breaking through up front, Jao yeah. Felix smashing at Barcelona, Rafael Liao. But up top, there is so much fluidity for Bruno Fernandes right now. If Cristiano Ronaldo starts at the Euros, it's just their own loss. He won't be good enough for them, Dad. They made that mistake at the World Cup, and if they do it again, I can't see them end up winning the Euros. Yes, now I take your point, Theo, but so would you not start him in that first game? No, he's not my GOAT, and I don't start him at all. I play Gonzalo Ramos over him. I think he's uh, more effective, a better player. I mean, one plays for PSG and one plays in the Saudi League. End of conversation. Now I'm gonna put you on the spot, Theo. Yes. I want you to name two or three countries who you think can win this tournament. Yeah, I've already said it. England, uh, France are in with a great shout, but I don't think it'll be their tournament. Uh, look, you, it's hard to write off Germany in their own, in their own country, yes. but I, I will write them off. And then Portugal. If they don't play Ronaldo, I think they've got a chance. Yes, I'm going to say France, England and Portugal. No, Italy. No, Sp actually, no. I'll take it back. I've forgotten no. one. I'm going to add Spain to my list. Yeah. Very underrated, Dad. But there's so much more discussion to go on in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. Smash the like if you want more Euros content. We'll see you in a bit.